Percy Julian was a pioneering chemist who, with only a 10th grade education, went on to earn his Ph.D. His research into chemical synthesis of medicinal drugs was used to treat glaucoma and arthritis. And although his race presented many challenges, he is regarded as one of the most influential chemists in American history. Welcome, this is One Mike Black History, and I'm your host, Country Boy. And this episode is a special collaboration with the Petri Dish Science Podcast. If you would like to learn more about the specifics of Percy Julian's scientific achievements, head over to the Petri Dish Podcast, which I've linked in the description. If you like this, if you enjoy this, please join us at onemichistory.com. And without further ado, let's get started. Percy LaVon Julian was born in April 11, 1899 in Birmingham, Alabama. He was one of six children. His father, James Sumter Julian, was a railroad mail clerk and had previously worked as a school teacher. And his mother, Elizabeth Leanne Adams, was also a school teacher. And they tried to stress that education offered a path to a better life for black people. Percy would attend elementary school in Birmingham and would move on to Montgomery, Alabama, where he would attend school through the eighth grade. But there were no high schools for African-American students. So in 1916, Julian applied and was accepted to DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana. DePaul accepted a few black students since the Civil War, but let them know that they were not welcome. Julian had to use the bathroom off campus in a slop bucket used as a toilet and he ate all his meals also off campus because they refused to serve him food. He began as a probationary student having to take high school level classes at night along with his freshman and sophomore course load. He would struggle at first because of how hopeless behind he felt that he was but by sophomore year he had proved himself and he was named a member of the Sigma Psi honorary society as well as Phi Beta Kappa member. Upon his graduation from DePaul in 1920, he was selected as the class valedictorian. Julian's family was so encouraged with his success, his father would move his entire family to Greencastle to send the rest of his brothers and sisters to DePaul. Although at the top of his class, he was discouraged from seeking admission into graduate school because of potential racial attitude on the part of future co-workers and employers. They recommended that he find a teaching job at a Negro school in the South where a master's degree was not needed. Julian would take the advice of his advisor and took a position as a chemistry teacher at Fisk University, a black college in Nashville, Tennessee. After two years at Fisk, Julian was awarded the Austin Fellowship in Chemistry and earned a scholarship to study chemistry at Harvard University. He felt that he was finally given an opportunity at graduate level work at a time when no other Negro had obtained a master's level degree in chemistry at Harvard. And Julian would excel. The racial climate in the 1920s was as bad as any point in the early 20th century, and Harvard was not immune. The President Abbott Lawrence Howard banned all black students from the dorms on Harvard Yard, but none of this deterred Julian. He would achieve straight A's and finish at the top of his class, receiving his master's degree in 1923. Even with this success, Julian was unable to obtain a position as a teaching assistant at any major university because of the perception that white students would refuse to learn under a black instructor. Thus, he would move on to a teaching position at West Virginia State College for Negroes. And although he did not find happiness in this situation, his fortunes would turn. In 1929, Julian received a fellowship from the General Education board to travel to Vienna, Austria to pursue his PhD. While in Vienna, Julian would develop a fascination into the chemistry of plants and their properties and capabilities, primarily focusing on alkaloids in plants. A common 
Austrian shrub, the Cordelius cava, it was effective in treating pain and heart palpitations. Julian was tasked with isolating the active ingredient and identifying his chemical structure. This was a challenge that he needed to do to earn his PhD, and he felt like it was like finding a needle in a haystack. It required stubbornness and focus and required repeating over and over and over the same kinds of processes until the answers come out. Slowly, the answers did come. And in his second year, Julian identified the active alkaloid in Cordelius Calva and was able to achieve his first chemical triumph to receive his PhD. And at the time, he was only the third African-American to receive his PhD in chemistry. In 1931, he returned to the United States and to Howard University as the head of the school's chemistry department. Soon, he was caught up in university politics when his lab assistant, Robert Thompson, found him with his wife. Thompson sued Julian for alienating affections with his wife, and when Thompson appeared that he was going to be fired, he released letters that Julian had written him while he was in Vienna. Under pressure from Mordecai Johnson, the president of Howard and the board of trustees, Julian resigned and moved back to DePaul, where he was appointed research fellow in chemistry. At DePaul, he became an expert in synthesis and worked with his associate from Vienna, Dr. Joseph Pigl, on the synthesis of physostigmine, a plant compound and found in K-bar beans. Synthesis at the time was the highest calling for chemistry in the 30s. Their achievement led to physostigmine being widely used as a treatment for glaucoma. After much work and adversity, Julian was successful and became internationally hailed for his achievements. Despite all his oppressive achievements, Julian's opportunities were still restricted. DuPont refused to appoint him to a permanent facilities position, and American colleges and universities at the time were not prepared to have a black person teaching white students. In 1935, Julian decided to leave the world of academics and enter the corporate world by accepting a position at the Glidden Company as the chief chemist and director of the Soya product division. It was a significant development as he was the first black scientist hired for such a position. The Glidden Company was a leading manufacturer of paint and varnish and counted on Julian developing compounds from the soy based products which they used to make paints and other products. Glidden helped trigger an explosive growth in the industry of soy beans and for the next 18 years his work would uncover new uses for the chemicals found in soybeans not only to an enormous profit to Glidden but to relieve human suffering across the globe. For example the protein that he extracted from soybeans was used to produce a fry retardant foam for fire extinguishers called aerofoam. It was used in the United States Navy and saved countless lives of sailors during World War II. In addition, Percy Julian continued his success by developing a way to inexpensively develop male and female hormones from soybeans. These hormones would help prevent miscarriages in women and help fight cancer and other ailments. The discovery was actually an accident. After a water leak in a giant tank of soybean oil, Julian recognized crystals in the stigmasterol, a steroid at the bottom of the tank. He eventually developed a process for converting the stigmasterol into progesterone, which he made available on a commercial scale. Today, progesterone is used to decrease the risk of uterine cancer and hormone replacement therapy. Julian also found a way to create a synthetic cortisone product that greatly relieved sufferers of rheumatoid arthritis. Real cortisone was extremely expensive and only the rich could afford it. So significant was his work in the 1950s that in the city of Chicago, he was named the Chicagoan of the year. The honor that signaled to Julian his acceptance by his white counterparts in his field 
and in his community. But when his wife, Anna, and their two children moved to Oakland Park, Illinois, a predominantly white affluent suburb in Chicago, they met a violent resistance. This home was set afire by an arsonist on Thanksgiving Day in 1950, and a year later, dynamite was thrown by a passing car, and it exploded outside the bedroom of one of Percy's children. Regardless of the fact that many of the residents in the town relied on his methods to relieve their pains and provide their safety, some would not accept him because of his race. Despite these threats, the Julians stood their ground and remained in Oak Park. In 1954, Julian left the Glidden Company to establish Julian Laboratories. He specialized in producing synthetic steroids, which pharmaceutical companies use to make their drugs. When he discovered that wild yams in Mexico were even more effective than soybeans for some of his products, he opened up Laboratory Julian de Mexico in Mexico City, which cultivated yams and shipped them to Franklin Park for refinement. He proved to be as talented entrepreneur as he was a chemist. Julian's company flourished and in 1961 he sold the Franklin Park plant to Smith, Klein and French, a giant pharmaceutical company and he received a sum of $2.3 million. By the 70s, Julian had earned more than 100 patents. He was widely recognized as an innovator who had made a wide range of medicines more affordable. He worked with civil rights groups to fight discrimination. He raised funds and speak publicly against racial injustice and for the full equality of all Americans. Percy Julian died in 1975 of liver cancer in Waukegan, Illinois, but perhaps his greatest achievement was breaking the color barrier in the American industry of science. After years of struggling to get respect in his field and his community, Julian was finally recognized as a genius and a pioneer. Julian's labs served as training grounds for dozens of promising African-American chemists and for his contributions for humanity, Julian received 18 honorary degrees, more than a dozen civic and scientific awards, and he was the second African-American selected by the National Academy for Science and their first chemist. And lastly, the American Chemistry Society recognized his work as a National Historic Chemical Landmark, one of the top 25 accomplishments in American chemistry history. Thank you for listening. My name is Country Boy. This has been One Mike, and this is the story of Percy LaVon Julian. If you'd like to learn more about the scientifics of Percy LaVon Julian, please head over to the Petri Dish podcast and join me at OneMikeHistory.com. Peace.